Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Thursday, the 5th of May, 2022. And boy, what an exciting day or so we have had for equities, for cryptos, and particularly for gold and silver. Why? Especially as interest rates have gone up? Well, let's take a look. Well, looking at the headlines, one has to ask the question, how, in view of the fact that Powell vows to curb inflation with hikes that risk economic pain, how come gold and silver prices have risen? How come equities have risen? How come cryptos have risen? Well, we'll take a look. Let's look at the first headline, but then we'll look at perhaps a more interesting headline. Vows to curb inflation with hikes that risk economic pain. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell assured Americans that policymakers will do what it takes to curb surging inflation, acknowledging this could cause some pain as the US central bank deployed its most powerful policy tightening in decades. The Fed on Wednesday raised interest rates by 50 basis points for the first time since 2000. And Powell said similar moves were on the table for June and July. Now, this is the point to note. Still, investors took heart that he also pushed back against a larger 75 basis point increase, with stocks notching their largest rally on the day of a Fed meeting in a decade. And this is what has caused the markets to rise. People were expecting a 75 basis point increase. Now, in our weekly update published on the weekend, we said people were asking, will it be a quarter, half percent? And our view was it will be a half percent and potentially more to follow. However, the media or perhaps the institutions drove up the belief that a three quarter percent basis point was on the cards. We didn't believe that for a second. But look what it's done. He's raised rates at a faster level than many expected originally. If you go back a few months, people were saying it'll be impossible to raise rates. But they've pulled off the coup, at least temporarily, into fooling people. It's not as draconian as many expected it to be. However, in fairness to Bloomberg, they picked up this article, Power Won't welcome being seen as dovish. This was a historic day on Wall Street. The Federal Reserve administered its biggest rate hike in 22 years as it raised the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points. And in response, the stock market had its best day in two years, with the S&P 500 gaining almost 3%, virtually all of it coming after the news from the Fed. How to explain this? As we all know, the stock market reacts to what it expects to happen in the future rather than what has just happened. That's particularly the case if what was expected just happened anyway. A 50 basis point hike was thoroughly in the price. Meanwhile, any remaining fears that the Fed would go for 75 basis points didn't come true. And under questioning at his press conference, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that 75 basis point hikes weren't in the discussion for the future either. It was at this moment the S&P 500 took off. Now, for those of us who don't get too carried away with headlines, however, Powell did say in as many words that further hikes of 50 basis points were on the table for the next two meetings in June and July. But that's also in line with expectations. But he was clearer and more explicit than he needed to be. Stock markets evidently treated this as a big deal. So, we can see here that the market's worst fears, or drummed up worst fears, haven't materialized. However, we do not think this euphoria will last that long. Let's have a look what happened. Yesterday, the Dow Jones closed up 932 points, up 2.8%. The S&P up 124 points. 2.99%, and the Nasdaq, which has been hit quite hard in recent weeks, up 
3.19%. Still all three down for the month and all but the S&P 500 down for the year. We may very well see this as a selling opportunity to any remaining equities we have. Perhaps not quite yet, but this euphoria will be short-lived in our view at least. Asia Pacific not convinced overnight broadly down and in Europe and UK though we are flying on the back of what's happened in Wall Street and markets are up generally one to one and a quarter percent. The index fell a little but is regaining composure still well above 100 at 102.8 and we can see that the cryptocurrency market is up 2.5 percent gold gold brushed off the fears and look at this rise in the last 24 hours up 25 dollars at 1895 dollars if we bear in mind if i look at the week figures it closed at 1897 it's now at 1896 it's changed slightly so broadly the same as Friday's close, we had that huge dip on Monday. It continued through Tuesday and then that major recovery yesterday. Silver up 38 cents at $23 exactly, been as low as 22.23 and as high as 23.29. And again, you can see it fell for the week and then has risen yesterday, made Two attempts, really, because it rose in the early hours of this morning and is petering back ever so slightly. How that compares with Friday's close. It closed on Friday at 22.77. It's now 23. So it's actually 23 cents higher. And energy prices broadly unchanged, but both WTI crude and Brent well into the $100. 107 for WTI and 110 for Brent crude. Now, economic data. It's going to have an impact, but it's not going to be necessarily huge because everyone will be responding to the announcement yesterday. We can see that on Monday, the manufacturing index was actually slightly disappointing. We can then also see that factory orders were better than anticipated and motor vehicle sales slightly higher than anticipated. The ADP employment report, though, yesterday was lower than March's figures, the April figures were lower than March and lower than expectations. This might suggest, might suggest a fall on the non-farm payrolls on Friday. And the ISM services index is slightly down. So both manufacturing and services lower than anticipated. We can see that today we have the initial jobless claims and continuing jobless claims. But tomorrow will be an important day, may have an impact, but we doubt it's going to be significant unless the figures are vastly awry with the non-farm payrolls and consumer credit. What's going to happen for the rest of this week? Well, it depends if the markets come to their senses and realize that a half percent rise now having occurred and a half percent in the next for each of the next two months is actually quite a substantial rise where we may see a falling back. If they were anticipating far worse, then yes, it might edge forward. But we are of the opinion that this elation will be short-lived. Unless, of course, the Russia-Ukraine conflict eases. And let's not forget that factor. After tomorrow's non-farm payrolls, we shall be reversing back to Russia and Ukraine in terms of attention. And finally, we have the Bank of England set to raise rates. And for those in the United Kingdom, the Bank of England is set to mark a major birthday with two big decisions, balancing its fight against inflation with keeping the recovery from pandemic on track. The UK central bank is widely expected to hike interest rates to 1%, the highest since the financial crisis. Well, we haven't got long to wait for that decision. What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to see higher stock markets? Will that adversely affect gold and silver? Or has the Fed proven to be less hawkish than many envisaged? And we'll see a continuing rise in precious metal prices. 
Let us know your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Press the bell sign if you haven't done so. Join us on the weekend update. We have local authority elections today in the United Kingdom. So we are actively involved in those. So they won't be a video or very unlikely to be one tomorrow unless something quite urgent raises its head. But certainly join us on our weekend update. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.